So take a look at this. Um, this is the overhang around the perimeter, as you can see. And this is a unequal intersecting pitch roof. And the shallow pitch is 512, which are these two sides, and the sides are 912. And I've used this for some other layout. So on any way, you have two hips on this side and two on this side and two valleys here. And the overhang, if left alone, that is to say, if the hips land on the corner, will be different. And there's tons of questions about how to get equal overhangs. And one of the things is that here in California, there's a lot of exposed eaves, but there are bastard roofs. And so we don't really run our hips off the corner because it looks funny when you look up there. And uh, But if it's soffited, which of course there are houses that are soffited, there are more traditional style houses that are soffited underneath, which is a great look, saves paint, you know, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. With a soffited eave, or whereas with exposed tails, you're sort of bound by certain architectural styles. Um, but there's a lot here in the Bay Area, California. I'm in San Francisco Bay Area, so there's all kinds of architects that have exposed that use exposed eaves. You know, you know, from Maybach to you know what. Frank Lloyd Wright was even around here, Julia Morgan. So anyway, but a lot of beautiful architecture. But traditional architecture back east where it snows and whatnot would have higher pitches with soffited overhangs. So in this instance, we want to make the overhang the same. So this dotted line here is a depiction of the overhang being the same. Now, one thing to know about in unequal intersecting pitch roofs is that you use the rises divided by each other to get these factors. So here you'll see nine and five, and those are the rises of the, the two pitches, the tw nine, 12, and a five, 12, consistent runs, but different rises, you divide them by each other, and you get 5.55 and 1.8. Those factors are used over and over again in bastard roof framing or unequal inter pitch, unequal intersecting pitch roof framings. Framing. So in this instance, you want to know the difference between the two overhangs, right? Right now, one is 12 and the other is 6.66, right? Which is the ratio. 6.66 is 0.555 of 12. So anyway, the difference between the two will give you this length here, right? So 12 minus 6.66 will give you 5.333, right? So that's here. And then to maintain an equal triangle, a triangle that is equal to 9 and 5, right? 5.33, the run will be, in this case, 9.6, right? So... Difference between, and so that's this triangle here you see. So the difference between the two overhangs is 5.3. The factor of 912, 5.3 times 1.8. Remember, this is this is our factor triangle. This is the rises, same triangle, factor triangle, sides divided by each other, 5 divided by 9, 9 divided by 5. 0.55 and 1.8. 1.8 times 5.3 is 9.6. So that being the case, pull 9.6 off either side and that'll give you your new span. Now, generally it's the wall framer's responsibility to establish heights, right? And wall framers, when they do that, they use the rise ratio of the pitch that it's being, that's, it's, is being affected by it. So in this case, it's a 512. So, 9.6 times the rise ratio of a 512, which I believe is 4.4166 4 right here, would be four inches. So this plate would rise four inches. And you gotta think in terms of the thickness of the 
hip, this hip is, these are three buys in this instance, but whatever they are, you got to think in terms of the center. Now, when I said the difference, I mean the difference from center line to center line times the rise ratio of a 512, which is 0 0.416. So 9.6 times 4.16 is, is the rise of this, the plate height rise to the center line. But you got to think in terms of the thickness of the framing member, which in this is case three by inch and a quarter on either side. And then that's where your plate will end out here. Although the center line will determine the, the uh, height, right? You do that, so that's how much plate you'll have there. And then the rafter length is exactly the same. So now take a look at this. You'll see that the ridge is lengthened, right? How much, is it, how much does this ridge lengthen in order to swing this whole apparatus? The fascia, you know, and all that. This direction in order to, we know it's 5.33. We know it slides out 5.33, so that's how long the ridge extends, 5.33. So the ridge gets a little longer, everything swings out. The rafter lengths are the same, but the bridge mouth's in a different spot. Normally it would be here, now it's here. In this in little tiny model here, you got a short rafter and a really long tail, but it wouldn't normally be that way. It'd be a long rafter and a you know a short tail, right? This tail is really long, it leaves doesn't leave from the corner, it leaves out here, goes out here, and now there's a lot of ways to do the fascia, you know. You can, it's up to you how you play it. Some people dye their fascia to the side, of, inside. Sometimes they dye their plane of their roof, I mean, to the inside. Sometimes they dye, it's not technically correct. Uh, they Some people dye it to the center line. Some people dye their the plane of their roof, these two planes of the roof to the outside of the fascia, and there's some manipulation that goes on there. Uh, and it's pretty neat the way you can get it done. But at any rate, the point is that we're going out to the end of the rafter tails in this instance here. Now, if you did run your fascia, it would actually be, and you were using the ends of the rafter tails, clearly this would no longer be 12 inches, but it would be 13 and a half inches. So that inch and a half, the bevel on this one and the bevel on that one would be different. So the reveal, if you bevel them, would be different here. This bevel, you know, a 9-12 uh, rise ratio is 0.75 times the thickness of the board, which is an inch and a half, would be, you know, three quarters of an inch and a half, which is, you know, an inch and some change, right? But this one here, the rise ratio of a 5-12 is... 0.4166 times an orange, inch and a half would be only a half inch or so. Of, so that will be uh, something you'd want to think about. Not to mention when those two bevels come together and you took a Japanese saw and cut them, it would give you this angle here. It, it, it's interesting. It'll, it'll, it'll be different. It'll almost be like you're going downhill a little as though this, was, this side was truncated and you had to go down with a comet. So anyway, you have to consider that and fool with that and figure out your method by which you're going to do it. You can, like I said, run these all out and then cut them back. And then when they plane, they'll plane to here, you know. So, but nobody's cutting hips in the middle of the air, you know. So you just calculate it. And, and the way, the method by which you calculate it is a different thing. So now let's look to see what would happen if you ran an overhang 12 inches without... Uh, messing around uh, extending the ridge and changing the location. This is the top of the common rafter. It's actually the top of the hip in this drawing, but it's also the top of the common rafter, this line here. It would go well below the fascia line here. This is the top. This line here is where the top of these rafters plane and land. You know, the bottom of these rafters plane down here, but the top is this line here. And here you can see this top at 12 inches would plane well below it. So you could actually do that, you know. You don't have to run your hip off the corner. You could actually have your fascia go downhill a little bit. And that's been known to happen. And um, this is just, this business of raising your plates is varying plate heights. And it's not super advanced. 
roof framing if you were to if you were to cut this whole thing so it had a nine inch or whatever the overhang was uh, uh, I think it was 6.66 inch overhang but you did swing it off the corner you would have a Tudor this is considered a Tudor peak we frame those all day long you know with standard roof framing so uh, variant plate heights is something that uh, standard roof framers that is to say, people who don't delve much into unequal intersecting pitch roofs are used to. And uh, you could get easily frazzled when you look at a roof like this, like, how am I supposed to? But you, you probably, if you're a wall framer and you work your way up to becoming a, even a, you know, just a sort of a mid-level roof framer, you already know how to get your plate heights changes. It's, anyway, yep, these factors are extremely important right here and will be used to achieve these all the jack rafter runs as well as other things and the triangle itself is used to determine the side cuts if you'll notice this high pitch corresponds with this steep side cut and this low pitch corresponds with the shallow side cut and so forth. So this is called the miter ruler, this triangle, if drawn out at a proper size. Uh, if instead of you draw a five by nine inch triangle and then extend the nine to 12 and then connect dots with the same hypotenuse angle, you'll end up with, like I said, this one, six point Six six, I believe it is. So it'll be twelve six point six six, which is equal to a five nine, right? 